Right, welcome back to another Coins to Collect video and a bit of a different Coins to Collect video because we aren't necessarily talking about coins. In fact, we're more gonna be talking about woodwork. <laughs> this is a painting that Master Dan Temple kindly painted for me many moons ago and I'm still in shock and awe that he uh, painted something so nice for little old me. Before Dan had ever painted this, I had an idea to build something for him to say thank you for his amazing work and support for so many different coin channels. I wanted to make him a piggy bank. Now, there is an amazing chap on YouTube, uh, an American, a Californian, and his name is Steve Ramsey, and he has a woodworking channel called Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Amazing guy, explains everything so well, keeps it very basic, keeps it very down to earth, just really nice and simple and easy to follow projects. And I got a template that I downloaded from his website, and we've got all the uh, parts that you need to sort of cut out and use as stencils, templates, whatever they're called all the bits and bobs you need to make your very own piggy bank. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link to his video up on the top of the screen there and in the video description. You can go and check him out, maybe even make your own piggy bank. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get some wood and I decided to start from scratch and I'm gonna break up a pallet. Okay, so first things first, we need some wood for this uh, pig piggy bank build. And I could go to a hardware store and buy some lovely, flat, planed, smooth wood. But instead, I'm going to build it out of pallet wood and um, reclaim the material. Now, I found the best way to do this is with a bar just like this. And this is a roughneck pallet buster or pry bar and it is 33.99 at Screwfix at the moment. Probably get it a bit cheaper if you look on other sites, maybe Amazon and uh, eBay probably have different versions of this, but they all do the same thing. All you gotta do is get the jaws under the pallet. So just pull it up, nice and easy. Shouldn't have any splitting whatsoever. Let's just pull this one up and we can work this one loose. There we go. So that's one down. And I'm left with some nice big chunky risers as well. Right, so the next thing is to denail the boards and it's always a good idea to have a bucket like this handy so if any of the nails fall on the decking um, and I can't find them at least the doggies aren't going to find them running around a bit later on so you may have to straighten some of these nails just to make sure they come out easier and just hammer them out flip it over use the other bit of the claw hammer and pull the nails out and don't drop your hammer. I'm gonna have a little pot here. I'm gonna put all the loose nails in, and then one day I'll take them down the tip, put them in the metal recycling. Easy. There you go, in the bucket. In the bucket. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is put a nice clean edge down one side of each board so I can glue them together to make wider boards that then I can stick the templates down onto the boards. Glasses, safety glasses, ear defenders, because this is cheap Chinese table saw that I've put into my workbench uh, and it's a bit noisy, so gotta have ear defenders. Something shot out of the blade and hit me in the hand. Got to have your goggles and you've got to have a, 
uh, blade guard. Okay, so the next step is to glue all these boards together. Now I've set up my little rig for gluing up uh, boards. So I just need to add a bit of uh, sriracha to the boards. Sriracha, nice little squeezy bottle, it's quite handy for this sort of thing. So we're just gonna put a bit of glue right down the center of that board and the center of that board. I'm not too happy with how they're these boards have come out or how I've planed these boards, I guess is the word. They're not exactly straight, so I'm gonna to have to clamp these with a lot of pressure to nip them in. That one down, that one to meet that one, that one down to meet that one. And normally I don't wanna do it too tight because I don't want it to buckle a bow but this one, I really need to nip, pull the ends in, so I'm gonna have to do it a lot tighter than I would normally like to. And we'll do a couple over the top to help keep them down, keep them from bowing up under pressure. I do like using these sash clamps. There's a lot of strength, a lot of power in these. My preferred go-to clamp. So then we'll have two wider boards that we can use to make this piggy bank. There we go, right, so we'll leave that for a little while, come back and uh, see how they turned out. Hmm. Right, it's the next morning and the glue's had all night to dry, so hopefully once we get the clamps off, uh, there'll be no gaps in the joints. Okay, so yeah, great. They've stuck together very nicely, but unfortunately they are not exactly flat. So we've got to clear some glue off of them and maybe put them through the thicknesser. That one's not too, too bad, it's this side. Yeah, put them through the thicknesser, trying to get rid of some of that wobble. Before I put the wood through my planer, I learned a very valuable lesson. <laughs> Pretty much on my first day using this, I put a bit of board through the planer and there's a tiny little bit of metal left in the wood and it chipped the blade and then I started getting streaks and lines across the wood. So then I have to replace the blades. So now I make sure to check the wood with a metal detector to see if there's anything left in the hole. So let's have a look. I'm just gonna check the rest of the board. Okay, so there's a little bit of metal left in this hole here. And sometimes there's a little bit of um, I think it's copper, little copper spur that's on some of the nails. So it just, I don't know, grips hold of it, locks it in better or something, I don't know. But sometimes those little bits can be left in the hole. So all I've got to do is drill out that last little bit of metal, hopefully. Test that again. We've seen there's another little bit somewhere. Looks like we're good to go. And there we have it. Reasonably flat and smooth boards. Yeah, really happy with that. Right, it's time to glue these templates to the boards that we've made. And as you can see, I've only just got enough room on these boards to glue these templates down, only just. So I'm gonna glue these down and uh, then we can cut them out on the bandsaw. Right, so the other thing I've gotta do before I can cut anything out is actually glue two of these boards together to make the perfect width. The coin slot is this bit here, and I'm gonna need a wide enough coin slot for a two pound coin. So that's three and a half centimeters wide. So I've gotta basically glue these two pieces together to make the body of the pig. It's now been a week since I clamped this up, so uh, I really need to crack on and finish this piggy bank. Gonna get all these clamps undone 
and we'll get um, cutting on the bandsaw. Okay, there we go. I've got these ears and snout. I've got the head as well. So for the moment, that's all the band sawing I need to do. So I can put that away and get onto uh, some sanding. Okay, the one thing I nearly forgot to do before I put the band saw away was to actually go in there and actually cut out the center of the piggy bank. Uh, I got a bit close to some of the edges, a bit closer than I would have liked, but I actually think it went all right in the end. Okay, this is probably the bit of the process I'm probably more worried about, um, just because I've never done this before. But what I've got is I've got a brand new uh, Titan belt sander, and I made a little bit of a, a jig or a rig or whatever you want to call it for it to sit on. The idea is I can use it on its side and sand right close to these edges. Okay, so the next thing I've got to do is cut out the left and the right side of the pig. We've got the center, I need to do either side. And I'm gonna do that with using a flush trim router bit. So some double-sided sticky tape to start off with. We'll give it three strips, I should think that'd be enough. All it's gotta do is just hold it together while I, um, yeah, cut it out, so right on the bottom edge and just, just enough room at the top. Oh, what? That tells me that, or that burning tells me that I've got too much wood on there. I need to take off some of this ac excess wood. Need to go on the bandsaw again and cut more of this out. Hmm, this, this whole piece might just turn into a practice piece now. So I got a bit cheesed off with the whole thing. I did go back to it and I, I finished cutting out the two halves. Load of gunk left by the double-sided tape, but you know, whatever. A bit rough, not really happy with it, but to be honest with you now, I'm running out of time, so I've only got a couple of free days um, off of work before next week I go down to the Mint. And the, the whole idea is to present this pig uh, <laughs> to Master Dan Temple at the Mint. I'm not sure of the best way to fix all this lot. I've still got the centerpiece and it's obviously got a lot of material still around the edges. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue this down onto the one of the sides. On the bands, I'll take as much material off the edges as I can, then glue the other side on, and then I can sand it, and uh, hopefully um, it might resemble a pig. Okay, so I've glued these two parts together. Uh, didn't bother filming it. I think you understand the process. And now I'm just going to put this on the bandsaw and try and cut off all the excess wood around the edge. You all right? Oh. Trying to make a piggy bank pig. Oh, good, yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Now, that isn't actually looking too bad. I'm quite happy with that. I got closer than I thought I could. It's getting awfully thin. I guess once it's all glued together, it'd be as strong as anything, and that won't be a problem. So just gonna try and take off a little bit more, especially around the bottom here. Okay, 
Okay, so yeah, I think I'm reasonably happy with this. There's a few little holes and things that I'll have to put some wood filler in. So the next step is to actually glue the right hand side to the body of the pig. And there we go, a glued together pig. Now I'm gonna put it back on the bandsaw and try and take a bit more of this off. It's a little bit wobbly, so we're gonna to have to even up the feet, sort them out. But we're nearly there. Mask on, goggles on. Right, that, whew, that is about as good as I think I'm gonna get it with this sander. That is lovely and smooth now. I've got these feet really nice now. There's a little bit in there that I don't quite like. Anyway, moving on, it's underneath, you're not gonna see it. Round over the edges, and I've still got to drill a hole in the bottom for the uh, coin slots. And I bought some plugs for this. I can't actually think off the top of my head where they are. I might have just given him a, give him a piggy bank that he can't use. I'm, I'm really happy with that now. I'm really happy with that now. Right, I'm really happy with the fit of all these parts now. Yeah, really happy. I thought I'd give the ears a little bit of shape. Yeah, a little bit of a curve to them there. And then go around the snout, just try and uh, smooth off the, some of the flat spots. So I don't want to go too crazy. Um, the temptation is to keep going. Right, so to glue the ears and the snout to the head, I'm going to use this epoxy resin. Never used epoxy resin before. This was only from Poundland, so I have no idea how good it's gonna be, but I guess we're gonna find out. Now it's quite helpful that they say in the instructions you can use this plastic tray or plastic housing to use as a mixing tray, which is quite cool, but I've gotta get all the paper off of it first. You break that or do you, I don't know how much I need. Uh, Right, no, okay, okay, these will definitely do the job, I would hope. Equal parts, there we go, just had to pop the bubble. Right, well let's give this a mix. Oh dear, this stuff's horrible. Looks so much easier on the other DIY videos. Never done this before. So that's got to go on the head. And we want it quite central, quite straight, probably about there. Well, when I say quite straight, <laughs> straight enough. Let's put a clamp on that. There we go. Let's try and do the ears. Try and figure out where I want them. Oh, it did say in the instructions to glue both parts of the of the areas that you want to glue, but I didn't do that. I don't suppose it really matters. About there. So the ears aren't necessarily symmetrical, but... Oh, that's my light gone. I don't know if you can still see me. I've got a battery powered light hanging up there. I need to fit, uh, I need to do the electrics and fit a proper light there. Will that stay or do I need to put some tape? I think I need to put some tape. I've got the world's worst masking tape. So I'm gonna use a bit of electrical tape just to hold them down. Don't know if that will do the trick, but 
it's pretty much all I've got. That'll do for the moment. I better charge this bloody light up. There you go. I, I haven't actually stuck the head on yet. I've just clamped it for now, but uh, I thought I'd give you guys the first sort of look of uh, how it's all um, coming together. I'm gonna paint the body first and then the paint the head once all the, uh, um, what is it called? The glue, <laughs> what is it called? Once that's all dried, I can then glue the, uh, or paint the head and then glue that to the body. So um, anyway, it's coming along nicely. We're nearly there, nearly there. Wow, it is very pink, very pink indeed. Um, I did give it a shake, but I will give it a stir if I can find something to stir it with, an old bit of cane. That is proper vivid pink, isn't it? Proper pink. I have got some white, maybe I could thin it out a little bit, but we might as well just go for it, a eh? proper big bright pink. Oh well, here goes. Oh, I like it actually, I really do like the pink just as it is. Love it, really like that. Okay, so I've decided I'm gonna paint the full pig head. I'm gonna do front and back. Oh well, if I get pink paint on me, I'll just have to embrace it. Okay, so I gave the uh, body of the pig a bit of a sand down, a light gentle sand down, and I painted it again. And that's feeling really smooth now. So I'm really liking that. I only painted the pig's head once and it is pretty rough. Maybe I should sand it and rub it down again. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's give only a gentle sort of scuff sand, but it does take a bit of the paint off, but. It's worth doing. And we'll give that another paint. The paintbrush in the Ziploc bag. Keep that nice and moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> and we'll give this another coat. Okay, so <laughs> home stretch really. I've got the pig painted very smooth. I've done a couple of coats and then sanded them back. I'm gonna lacquer the pig tonight it is thursday night i drive to cardiff tomorrow for the king's coronation on saturday so i've got to do at least one coat of lacquer tonight maybe i can get one done tomorrow morning but it's got to be done the face is coming along nice i've got my mum to help me uh, paint some eyes and things on there not quite done but we're nearly there with that and then of course i've got to glue the thing together I'm just trying to get the best fit I can for this plug. I'm almost there. So a little bit more sanding and hopefully we're nearly there for that. I can't think of a better way to do this. I don't think it'll take much more and that'll be a nice fit. That'll do. I'm not doing any more than that. Oh, that's much better now. That's much better now. Perfect. Never used spray lacquer before. I'm hoping this stuff's gonna be good. Who knows, quick dry and clear lacquer. That do. You guys at home would have seen the creation that I'm going to present to Dan. <laughs> Blood, sweat and tears I put into this thing. Dan's an amazing painter, amazing creative all round. He's made coins for pretty much every coin channel going. A great friend to all coin tubers and fans of coin videos. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, fans of he's, he's just, 
I can't, I can't, we, that's the best compliment, isn't it? We love him. We love him. He's amazing. And I've always wanted to give Dan a present or create something for Dan in return. This soup, okay, you shouldn't have. I, I did have done this, I spare mean. any expense with the box. <laughs> 48 quid, that box cost him. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That's an expensive car bar box, yeah, yeah. Old Trev, you know. There we go. And it's official merchandise, coin select, the bank collection. Right. That's a bit of a clue. The bank. The bank collection. Yeah. Ooh, here, here we go. I never I never usually get gifts, you know. <laughs> it's a swear pig. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, Trev. Oh, thank you. And I've made up at that. So, <laughs> so every time I uh, use a bit of fruity language, I suppose I better put a coin in it, yeah? 50. And you made that. You made... I made that. There you go. Go for it. <laughs> I'll bleep it out. You okay. go for it. <laughs> oh, b***. <laughs> 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 oh, s***. <laughs> you know? Trev, these are all good coins you're giving me, man. Oh, 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 I think they oh, were. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you much. I appreciate right, that. that. That that is that is amazing. Yeah. It's perfect. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Thank no, you. I, yeah, that really I appreciate you, mate. Really Thank do. You. Thank you. Wait, wait, well, they see this at all, you know. This. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, brilliant. What are you going to buy with your swear jar money? Pro pro probably well earned holiday or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a video on now you made? I'm doing it all, yeah. Oh, video fantastic. Fantastic. I'm honestly touched. The best gifts are the ones that are handmade, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, you know, yeah. and are created. I'm made up, you like it. I am made up. Fill it up. I'm going to take bets? a photograph of that. Okay, so we've gone from plans to finished pig. <laughs> there we go. Uh, as you can see, I presented it to Dan at the Royal Mint on the coronation weekend. And he seemed to be very happy with it. He seemed to be very pleased, so that was really cool. I decided just to paint the front and leave the top bare. I really just like seeing the wood and the fact that you can see all the layers of uh, the wood that I used. Personally, I think that's really cool. So I like a bit of recycling just as much as the next guy. So I thought I'd use this Nike trainer box with the price still on the side. This appeals to me for three reasons. One, recycling. Two, the sort of comedy element of using clearly <laughs> not my original packaging. And three, laziness. <laughs> I'm gonna glue that to the box. Official merchandise. Coins to collect, the bank collection. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you want more like this. I've got to make a shield trophy thing for the winning channel of the Mega Marathon Monday Challenge. But for now, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll see you next time. But until then, keep looking out for those coins to collect. And piggy banks. <laughs>